Welcome to the 2019 Missoula County Spelling Meeting. My name is Erin Lipkin, I'm the Missoula County Superintendent of Schools. The Missoula County Spelling Bee is sponsored by the Missoulian and Lee newspapers in cooperation with the Office of the Missoula County Superintendent of Schools. I'd like to begin by offering thanks to the many individuals who make this event possible. First, a huge thanks to Missoula County Public Schools, and especially Big Sky High School, for allowing us to hold this event here this year while Sentinel is under construction. And they did a great job setting up. And we have three wonderful judges sitting here at the judges table. We have Barbara Behrens, the former Missoula County Auditor, now retired. Jean Curtis, former Missoula County Commissioner, now retired. And Shelley Andrews, the principal of Bonner Elementary School. We have Kathleen McGone returning for her seventh run as our pronouncer. Thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> and our audio tech is Jessica Bird, the administrative coordinator at my office. She'll be serving as our audio tech recording today's fee, and she also did the majority of the work coordinating this fee, and she's the one who checked you in. Thank the Missoulian for sponsoring our bee and providing prizes, which will be handed out at the end of the spelling bee by a representative of the Missoulian. Did I miss you coming in? Is our Missoulian rep here? Okay, she must not have made it yet. And I'd like to thank the Missoula Community Access Television for recording the spelling bee today as part of a media assistance grant donated to the Missoula County Superintendent of Schools Office by MCAT. And finally, I'd like to thank all the school teachers, librarians, and staff who ran spelling bees in their schools, making it possible for these students to be here today competing at the county level. We do have a couple of contestant changes, and you can turn uh, to your, in your, your little booklet there. Spelling in place of... Um, didn't write her name down. Oh, Ziva. Ziva Montoya is Holly Ridley. And also Connor Bush will be taking the place of Ashby Hall. We have a couple of um, spellers who have not yet shown up. One who's traveling quite far, so hopefully she'll make it before the end of the practice round. And now we'll go over the rules for the spelling bee. The one and only rule for the audience is to please shut off your cell phones at this time. So I'll take a moment for you all to do that. Double check them. Now, spellers, I want you to face the pronouncer right here as she reads the words to be spelled. The speller is responsible for any misunderstanding of the word they are to spell, but the pronouncer will strive to get you all the information you need to understand what word you are to spell. Don't hesitate to ask for a word to be repeated. Spellers may also ask for the definition of the word, its part of speech, language of origin, and to hear the word used in a sentence. Homonyms will be indicated by the pronouncer. If the dictionary lists more than one spelling for a word, any of the spellings will be accepted if clearly identified as being a standard variant of the word to be spelled. Spellers are not required to indicate capitals or hyphens. Spellers should face the judges, not the pronouncer, as they spell. So face the pronouncer to hear your word and the judges when you're spelling. I urge all spellers to pronounce the word ahead of time before they begin spelling it. While this is optional, it allows us to correct you if you heard the word wrong. Spellers can stop in the middle of a word and re-spell but they cannot change the letters they have already spoken. Please speak in a loud and clear voice so the judges can hear you. Webster's Third International Dictionary will be the final authority. Any appeal to reinstate a speller must be made immediately prior to the end of the round. Only written appeals will be accepted, delivered to me, I'll be sitting at that table over there, 
um, by the end of the round in which the missed spelling occurred. Only the spellant's parents, legal guardian, or teacher may appeal on the speller's behalf. The appeal must state the speller's name, the word in question, and the reason the speller should be reinstated. The judges will make the final determination according to the official appeal protocol, and that decision is final. Copies of the official local spelling bee rules are available at the registration table. Now, spellers, as you leave the stage, stop at the awards desk right over there uh, to drop off your number and to pick up your certificates of participation. Friends and family, if you must leave before the end of the spelling bee, please do so at the break to minimize dis disruption to the spellers. We will have a 10 to 15 minute break after the third or fourth round to give spellers a chance to use the restroom and get a drink of water. After we return from the break, we'll be moving into the final rounds. The last rounds can be tricky as far as determining the first three place, the first three place winners and their alternates. We will slow down a bit here to be sure we get it right and explain the procedure in more detail after the break. Cash prizes will be awarded to the top six spellers courtesy of the Missoulian. The top three winners will also receive a medallion. The school of the winner will be presented with a traveling trophy, which will remain at the school until next year's spelling bee. If the top three spellers attend a school which registered with Scripps, they will qualify for the Treasure State Bee. I will go over the end of bee procedures after the break. Now spellers, in just a moment, you'll be rising to find your seats. Don't bring anything with you. Even if you feel a bit silly wearing your number, they were assigned to you at random and determine which word you spell, so they must be visible as you spell. Listen carefully so you will know where to sit. I'm going to have you come up on stage now, in this order. <laughs> Spellers one through eight, please rise. You're going to come up these stairs. Speller one will take the first seat all the way to eight. Spellers 9 through 16, you can come up these stairs right here. You can rise and come on up on this side. Number 9 will be right here. Number 16 at the end. Numbers 17 through 28, you may rise and come up with these stairs. 17 through 28 on this side. 17 will be over at the far end. 28 will be in the middle. Spellers 29 to 40, come on up. You're going to go up those stairs. And you're going to start over here with 29. 40 being at the far wall. And 41 through 49, come on up. You can come up either set of stairs. You're going to be in the middle and the back. 41 on that side, 49 at, on this side. All right, I'm going to face you, spellers. In order to move from speller to speller as quickly as possible, please carefully follow these instructions. There should always be one student at the mic, and notice there's two microphones, one's for tall people and one's for shorter people, okay? So if the tall one isn't quite tall enough, then the tallest person can raise it a little bit. And if the shorter one isn't quite short enough, the shorter person can lower it a bit. You can also move the mic up and down, okay? So then we also should have the next two spellers waiting at these lines on the ground. Perhaps you notice the masking tape here on the ground. So we have one speller at the mic, one here, and one there, ready for their turns. You're going to return to your seat using the outside aisle instead of walking between the spellers that are waiting to spell. 
The order, uh, you need to stay in order and return to the exact same chair every time. The order of spellers is critical because the word you spell is truly a matter of luck. We're going to begin with a practice round where you will announce your name, your school, and your grade. That will give you a chance to get comfortable with the microphone and with being in front of an audience. Then Ms. McGone will give you a practice word, a really easy word. If you spell out during the practice round, it doesn't count. You can just return to your seat. One of these spellers will be the new Missoula County Spelling Bee Champion. But in fact, all these kids are champions. Let the games begin. Good luck to all of you. I just want to test this one. Is this, can you hear me? All right. Numbers two and three, do you want to stand behind them? Tell us your name, your school, and your grade. I'm Gavin Graham, um, Meadow Hill, and I'm in sixth grade. Your word is dog. Dog. D-O-G. Dog. Um, my name is Mercedes Gordon. I'm from Hellgate, and I'm in eighth grade. Okay. Mercedes, you want to be close enough so that uh, Mike will pick your voice up, too. Your word is rabbit. Rabbit. R-A-B-B-I-T. Rabbit. Uh, I'm Presley Castle from C.S. Porter Middle School. Um, I'm in sixth grade. Your word is rat. Rat. R-A-T. Rat. Uh, I'm Max Diaz from C.S. Porter, grade six. Your word is mouse. Mouse. M O U S E. Mouse. I'm Jackson Steele from Washington Middle School in seventh grade. Duck. Duck. D U C K. Duck. I'm Maisie Reese from Tucker Range School and I'm in fifth grade. Goose. Goose. G O O S E. Goose. I'm Holly Ridley from Meadow Hill Middle School, and I'm in sixth grade. Bat. Bat. B A T. I am Alexander Lubroff from Sussex School, and I am in grade five. Bug. Bug. B U G. Bug. I'm Milo Oliver from Washington, seventh grade. Cat. C A T. Cat. I'm Savannah Duder from Frenchtown. I'm in eighth grade. Pig. Pig. P I G. Pig. I'm Bailey Thomas from Valley Christian, and I'm in seventh grade. Bird. Bird. B I R D. Bird. <coughs> I'm Ariana Zachariasen from um, French Town um, Junior High. Hi. Owl. Owl. O-W-L. Owl. I'm Ashley Kim from Washington Middle School and I'm in 8th grade. Cow. Cow. C-O-W. Cow. I'm Henry Zoffer and I'm from Clinton and I'm in 8th grade. Henry, make sure you get close enough to the mic, too. Okay. Your word is hen. Hen. H-E-N. Hen. My name is Poppy Strachan from Meadow Hill, and I'm in sixth grade. Goat. Yes. Goat. G-O-A-T. Goat. I'm Gabriel from Target Rank School, grade seven. Sheep. Sheep. S-H-E-E-P. Sheep. I'm Ireland Lockridge from Sisterhood Middle School, and I'm in eighth grade. Mice. Mice. M I C E S. I'm Kyan from Lewis Clark in fifth grade. Mule. Mule. M U L E. Mule. 
I'm Kevin Rosa from Sears Porter Middle School, and I'm in seventh grade. Kid. Kid. K I D. Kid. I'm Samuel Kyle from Washington Middle School. I'm in eighth grade. Child. Child. C H I L D. Child. I'm Kyle Kallenberg from Jeanette Rankin, and I'm in fifth grade. Baby. Baby. B A B Y. My name is Faith Yu from Hellgate Elementary, and I'm in sixth grade. Man. Man, M A N, man. My name is Scarlett Austin, and I'm from Princeton Junior High, and I'm in seventh grade. Woman. Woman. W O M A N, woman. Hi. I'm Molly Harrison from Paxson in fifth grade. Girl. Girl. G I R L. Girl. I'm Darren Fuller from Meadow Hill, sixth, sixth grade. Boy. B O Y. I'm Nick Dunker, and I'm from CS Corner, and I'm in seventh grade. Lady. Lady. L A D Y. Lady. I'm Declan Harrington from Hellgate Elementary and I'm in sixth grade. Black. Black? Black. Black. B L A C K. Black. <coughs> My name is Heidi Schoonmaker and I'm from Lolo School. I'm in fifth grade. Green. Green. G R E E N. Green. My name is Nathan Hansen from French Town <coughs> Junior High. And I'm in seventh grade. Yellow. Yellow. Y E L L O W. Yellow. My name is Aurelia Bidwell. I'm from Bonner Elementary, seventh grade. Pink. 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 P I N K. Pink. I'm Finn Moyhan from Washington Middle School, and I'm in eighth grade. Blue. Blue. B L U E. Blue. <coughs> I'm Tegan Schmock from Lolo Middle School and I'm in 8th grade. Purple. Purple. P-U-R-P-L-E. Purple. I'm Quinn Wyland. I'm from Hellgate Middle School and I'm in 7th grade. White. White. W-H-I-T-E. White. <coughs> <coughs> Connor Bush from Potomac School, and I'm in eighth grade. Orange. Orange. O R A N G E. Orange. I'm Kat Maychuk. I'm from Meadow Hill Middle School, and I'm in eighth grade. Tan. 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 T A N. I'm Reagan Remmers. I'm from Target Range, and I'm in eighth grade. Brown. Brown. B R O W N. Brown. My name is Kylie Lopach and I'm an 8th grader at Bonner School. Shoe. Shoe. S-H-O-E. Shoe. I'm Emily Elbert from Meadow Hill in 7th grade. Sock. Sock. S-O-C-K. Sock. I'm Chloe Hankins. I'm from Hellgate Middle School and I'm in 7th grade. Okay, Chloe, you'll want to, this is what happened. So you want to make sure. Your word is shirt. Shirt. S-H-I-R-T. Shirt. I'm Jessamyn Johnson and I'm from C.S. Porter. Grade 6. Pants. 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 P-A-N-T-S. Pants. My name is Tessa Collard. I'm from Washington Middle School, and I'm in sixth grade. Dress. Dress. D R E S S. Dress. My name is Heaven Miller. I'm from DeSmet, and I'm in the sixth grade. Skirt. Skirt. S K I R T. <laughs> My name is Connor Hess, and I'm from Frenchtown, grade seven. Coat. Coat. 
coat. C O A T, coat. I'm Nolan O'Shell and I'm from St. Joe's, sixth grade. Paper. Paper. P A P E R, paper. I'm Harrison Beal and I'm from Lowell Middle School, I'm in sixth grade. Pen. Pen. P E N, pen. I'm Timmy Scott, I'm from sixth grade and I go to St. Joseph Elementary. Water. Water. W A T E R, water. My name is Ron Phillips. I'm from Woodland School. I'm in eighth grade. Book. Book. B O O K. Book. Zero. Zero. Z E R O. Zero. Tomato. Tomato. T O M A T O. Tomato. Waffle. Waffle? Waffle. Waffle. W A F F L E. Waffle. Shampoo. Shampoo. S H A M P O oh, O oh, shampoo. Etch. 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 E T C H. Etch. Library. This word has a homonym. The word is bangle. The part of speech is a noun, and the definition is a stiff, usually ornamental bracelet or anklet. Bangle. 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 B a n g e l. Bangle. Garage. Garage. G A R A G E. Garage. This word has a homonym. The word is current. The part of speech is an adjective, and the definition is um, per presently elapsing. Current. 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 C U R R E N T. Current. Measure. Measure. M. E A S U R E measure Canary Canary C A N A R Y Canary Whirlpool Whirlpool W I R L P O O L Whirlpool This word has a homonym. The word is cashew. It is a noun and it's defined as the kidney shaped nut of a tropical American tree naturalized in all warm countries. Cashew. Cashew. C A S H E W. Cashew. Deluxe. 
Deluxe. D E L U X E. Deluxe. This word is a homonym. The word is alderman. It is a noun and it's defined as a member of a legislative body of a city. Alderman. Alderman. A L D E R M I N. Alderman. Trek. Trek. T R E K. Trek. Hundredth. Hundredth. H U N D R E D T H. Hundredth. Cushy. Cushy. C U S H Y. Cushy. This word could be confused with a similar word. The word is errand. The part of speech is a noun, and it's a trip made in order to deliver a message or to purchase or attend to something. Errand. May you state the word again? Errand. We have a definition again. The definition is a trip made in order to deliver a message or to purchase or attend to something. I can give you a sentence as well. John's most important errand this afternoon is a trip to the bank to deposit a check. Errand. Errand. E-R-R-A-N-D. Errand. Dissect. Dissect. D I S. S E C T dissect. Glitz. 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 Would you like me to use it in a sentence? Yes. Jerry resigned from the opera ball committee when he realized the members were more interested in glitz than in raising money for the opera. Glitz. This word has a near homonym. The word is polka. It's a noun and it's a vivacious couple dance of bohemian origin with three steps and a hop in duple time. Polka. Polka. P O L K A. Polka. This word has a homonym. The word is gnat. It is a noun and it's any of various small two winged flies. Gnat. Gnat. G N A T. Gnat. Tattle. Could you repeat the word? Tattle. To tell tales or secrets, be a tale bearer. presents himself or herself or is presented by others often formally or officially as suitable for and aspiring to an office, position, membership, right, or honor. Candidate. Candidate. C-A-N-D-I.
D A T E candidate. Nosiest. No noisiest? Nosiest. Nosiest. N O S I E S T noisiest or nosiest? Yeah. Unity. <coughs> Unity. U N I T Y. Unity. This word could be confused with a similar word. The word is access. It is a verb, and it means to get at, gain freedom or ability to obtain or make use of. Access. Access. A C C E S S. Harmonica. Please repeat the word. Harmonica. Harmonica. H A R. M O N I C A harmonica. Nostril. Nostril. N O S T R I L. Nostril. Pretzel. Pretzel. P R E T Z E L. Pretzel. Renovate. Can you repeat the word? Renovate. Renovate. R E N O V A T E. Renovate. Hurricane. Hurricane. H U R R I C A N E. Hurricane. Alcove. Ballerina. Ballerina. B A L L E R I N A. Ballerina. Gradient. Gradient. G R A D I E N T. Gradient. Tofu. Tofu. T O F U. Cameo. Cameo. C A M E O. Cameo. Hypothesis. Hypothesis. H Y P O T H E S I S. I Spectrum. Spectrum. S P E C T R U M. Spectrum. This word has a near homonym. The word is protein. It is a noun and it's defined as, it's a long definition, any of a very large class of naturally occurring, extremely complex combinations of amino acids that are essential constituents of all living cells and also of the diet of the animal organism. Protein. Protein. P-R-O-T-I-E-N. This word has a homonym. The word is confidence. It is a noun and it means a relation or state of trust between persons who share or impart secrets or intimate matters. Confidence. Confidence. C O N F 
I D E N C E, confidence. This word can be confused with a similar word. The word is loam. It is a noun in its topsoil, a usually fertile and humus rich soil consisting of a mixture of clay, silt, and sand. Loam. Can you repeat the word? Loam. Loam. L O M E. Loam. Fidelity. Fidelity. F I D E L I T Y. Fidelity. Denim. Denim. D E N I M. Denim. Tragic. Tragic. T-R-A-G-I-C. And that's the end of round one. <laughs> Rehearse. Rehearse. R-E-H-E-R-S-E. Homonym. 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 H O M O N Y M. Homonym. Seersucker. Can you uh, define that word, please? A durable, plain woven fabric, usually of cotton or rayon, having stripes alternately flat and puckered. Seersucker. Um, can you put that in the sentence, please? Ben owns two suits made of seersucker. Can you repeat the word, please? Seersucker. Seersucker. S E. A R S U C K E R C sucker. Fathom. Fathom? Fathom. Can you give me the definition, please? A unit of length equal to six feet based on the distance between fingertips of a man's outstretched arms and used especially for measuring the depth of water. Fathom. Um, how do you spell that? That's what we're supposed to do. Fathom. F A T H O F. This word has a homonym. The word is llama. It is a noun, and it's defined as any of several cud-chewing mammals of South America related to camels, but smaller and without a hump. Llama. Llama. L-L-A-M-A. -A. Llama. Dross. 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 Do you want me to put it in a sentence? Yes. The critic commented that although there is certainly no shortage of dross on television, the medium is in the midst of a creative renaissance. It is something that is base, gross, or commonplace. Dross. 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 D R A U S T. Dross. Finale. Finale. F I N A L E. Finale. Interrupt. Interrupt. I N T E R R U P T. Interrupt.
This word could be confused with a similar word. The word is maraca. It's a noun, and it's defined as a rattle of Latin American origin that is often made from a hollow board containing pebbles or dried seeds, and it's used as a percussion instrument, usually in pairs. Maraca. Maraca. M A R A C A. Maraca. Polymer. Polymer. P O L Y M E R. Polymer. Stucco. Stucco. S T U C C O. Stucco. Contraband. Contraband. C O N T R A. B A N D contraband. Sultan. Sultan. S U L T A N. Sultan. Bevel. Could you use that in please? Jesse will bevel the edges of the cabinet he's making for his mother. Bevel. This word has a homonym. The word is mumu. It is a noun, and it's defined as a loose dress worn chiefly in Hawaii, having bright colors and patterns, and adapted from the dresses originally distributed by the missionaries to the native women. Mumu. Mumu. M O O M O O. Mumu. Cafeteria. Cafeteria. C A F E T E R I A. Cafeteria. Apricot. Apricot. A P R I C O T. Apricot. Worrisome. Worrisome. W O R R I S O M E. Worrisome. Diagnosis. Diagnosis. D I A G N O S I S. Diagnosis. Adios. A U D I O S. Paddock. Can you define that word, please? An enclosure where racehorses are saddled and paraded before a race. Paddock. Can you repeat it one more time? Paddock. Popularity. Popularity. P O P U L A R I T Y. Popularity. Boutique. Boutique. B O U T I Q U E. Boutique. Daffodil. Daffodil. D A S O D I L. Alamo. Can you please repeat the word? Alamo. Alamo. A tree of the genus Populus, especially an aspen. Alamo. Can you please use it? 
During hot afternoons in Houston, Jeff often sits under a large Alamo in his backyard. Carnivore. Could you please repeat the word? Carnivore. Carnivore. C A R N I V O R G. Leotard. Leotard. L E O T A R D. Leotard. Fiery. Repeat the word. Fiery. Fiery. F I E R Y. Fiery. This word could be confused with a similar word. The word is iguana. It is a noun that's defined as any of a number of large, herbivorous, chiefly tropical American lizards being typically dark colored with a serrated dorsal crest and attaining a length of several feet. Iguana. Iguana. I-G-U-A-N-A. -A, iguana. Stipple. Stipple. S-T-I-P-L-E. Panic. Panic. P A N I C. Panic. Giraffe. Giraffe. G I R A F F E. Giraffe. Excise. Could you repeat the word? Excise. Definition. Any of various taxes upon privileges as of engaging in a particular trade or sport or transferring property that are often assessed in the form of a license or other fee. Excise. Is it an excise is included in the cost of a fishing license. Excise. E X C I S E. Hyphen. 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 H Y P H E N. Hyphen. This word could be confused with a similar word. The word is canasta. It is a noun and it's defined as a card game that is a form of rummy played usually as a two-hand or as a four-hand partnership game using two full decks plus four jokers. Canasta. Canasta. C-A-N-A-S-T-A. -A Canasta. Trauma. Can you repeat the word, please? Trauma. Can you use it in a sentence? Haley could barely begin to understand the trauma experienced by families displaced by Hurricane Katrina. Trauma. Trauma. T-R-A-U-M-A. -A. Trauma. Crochet. Linnea decided to work on her crochet during the airplane trip. Crochet. Crochet. C R O C H E. Crochet. Crawling. Will you repeat the word? Crawling. The praline is a favorite candy in some parts of the southern United States. Praline. Praline. P-R-A-L-I-N-E. Praline. Incorruptible. 
incorruptible. I N C O R U P T A B L E. Incorruptible. Albatross. Albatross. A L B A T R O S S. Hazard. 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 H A Z A R D. Hazard. Vibrato. Oh, uh, can you use that uh, definition, please? A tremulous effect imparted to vocal or instrumental tone for added warmth and expressiveness. Vibrato. Okay, uh, vibrato. V I B R A T O. Vibrato. Quesadilla. Quesadilla. Q U E S A D I L L A. Quesadilla. Croquet. Croquet. C R O C H E T. Croquet. Post mortem. Can you repeat it? Post mortem. Can you give me a definition? An examination of a body after death to determine the cause of death or the character and extent of changes produced by disease. Post-mortem. Can you repeat it, please? Post-mortem. 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 P-O-S-T-M-O-R-D. O M E. Morgue. Morgue. M O R G U E. Morgue. Anchovy. 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 Can I have the definition, please? Any of a number of small herring-like fishes, especially a common Mediterranean form esteemed for its rich and peculiar flavor, anchovy. What's the, what's the origin? It's from a Greek word that went into Latin and then probably in Italian dialect and in Spanish. A-N-C-H-O-V-I-E, anchovy. Ball. May I have the definition? A large conical net with a device for keeping its mouth open that is dragged along the sea bottom and gathering fish or other marine life. Trawl. Trawl. T R O L L. Belay. Belay. Clementine. Clementine. Oh, um, just out of curiosity, what is the language of origin? It's probably from a French name. Okay. Clementine. C L E M E N T I N E. Clementine. <coughs> Galleria. The mall's Galleria is lined with retail stores and ethnic restaurants. Galleria. Galleria. G A 
L. A. R. I. A. Gallery. Ramada. Ramada. Can I have a definition, please? An open porch. Ramada. Hey, you said it sections. The class picnic was held in a Ramada in the public park. Ramada. What's the language of origin? This word went from Latin to Spanish. Ramada. R E M A D A. Mirage. Uh, can I have the definition, please? An optical phenomenon that is often observed on still days over deserts or hot pavements and has the mirror like appearance of a quiet lake or pool in which distant objects are seen inverted by reflection, though usually distorted. Mirage. Mirage. M I R A G E. Mirage. Fresco. Fresco. F R E S C O. Fresco. Discern. Can you, what's the origin of the word? It's originally Latin and went through French before becoming English. Discern. To detect something as something obscure or distance, distant with the eyes. Discern. Discern. D-I-S-C-E-R-N. Discern. Confetti. Can you give me the language of origin, please? It's originally from Latin, which formed it, excuse me, from Italian, which formed it from a Latin word, confetti. Confetti. C-O-N-F-E-T-T-I. Confetti. Gordita. Gordita. G-O-R-D-I-T-A. Gordita. Acronym. Acronym. A C R O N I N This word could be confused with a similar word. The word is salami. Um, it's a noun and it's a highly seasoned sausage made of pork and beef. Salami. Salami. S A L A M E. Salami. Cadenza. May I have the definition, please? A parenthetic flourish in the chorus in the course of an aria or other solo piece, commonly just before the final, final or other important chord sequence. Cadenza. Tortilla. Um, can you please repeat the word? Tortilla. Tortilla. T O R T I L L A. Tortilla. This word could be confused with a similar word. The word is incognito. It is an adverb and it is defined as with one's identity concealed or assumed to be concealed. Incognito. Incognito. I N C O G N I T O. Incognito. Orthodox. Orthodox. O R T H O D O X. Orthodox. Participant. Participant. P 
P-A-R-T-I-C-I-P-A-N-T, participant. Fennel. Can you read the word? Fennel. Definition, please. A perennial European herb not native to North America and cultivated for the aromatic flavor of its seeds. Fennel. Fennel. F-E-N-N-O-L. Bratwurst. R-A-U-T-W-U-R-S-T, Bratwurst. Desperado. Can you please give me the language of origin? It's from a word that went from Latin to Spanish, desperado. Harpsichord. Can you repeat the word, please? Harpsichord. Can I have a definition? A wire stringed keyboard musical instrument resembling in shape the grand piano and producing its tones by the plucking of its strings with quills or leather points. Harpsichord. Harpsichord. H A R S E C O R D. Buccaneer. Buccaneer. B U C C A N E E R. Buccaneer. Ravioli. Ravioli. R A B O L I. all of you for making it to the last round of the spelling bee. I want you to listen closely so you understand our end of bee procedures. Now, if all students misspell during the final round, all students will stay for a new round. Understand that all spellers who are eliminated in the same round are tied for the same place. After the champion has been determined, the runners-up and, alterna and alternates will be determined through a tiebreaker if that's necessary. If only one speller in a round spells correctly, a new one-word round begins and that speller is given the next word on the list, the potential championship word. If it is spelled correctly, the speller becomes the champion. If it's spelled incorrectly, a new round begins with all the spellers from the previous round spelling in their original order. When we get down to about eight to 10 spellers, we need all remaining spellers to return to their seats, even if they misspell their word. This is in case it becomes necessary to determine final placement with a tiebreaker. We encourage the audience to stay for the awards presented at the end of the B. In any event, the last six spellers must not leave until we have filled out the paperwork at the registration table. So those of you who are in the, the final three and final six, in fact, you will go to Jessica at that table and fill out all the paperwork that you need to go to the Treasure State B. The Missoulian has cash prizes as well that will be handed out by Cameron Evans. Are you ready? All right, take a deep breath. Good luck.
Amnesia. 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 A M N E S I A. Amnesia. Vogue. Vogue. V O G U E. Vogue. Synopsis. Synopsis. S Y N O P S I S. Synopsis. Libretto. Libretto. Can I have the definition? It is the book containing the text of a work as an opera for the musical theater. Libretto. Where is the origin? It came from Italian, which formed it from a Latin word. Libretto. L I B R E T O. Libretto. This word has a near homonym. The word is vulcanize. It's a verb and it's defined as to subject various materials, as for hardening, to a process of treating in any of various ways. Vulcanize. What's the language of origin? It's a Latin literary name plus an English combining form. Vulcanize. V U L C A N I Z E. Vulcanize. Piazza. Have the definition, please. An open square in a town, piazza. P. L. A. Z. A. Piazza. Misanthropy. Misanthropy. The English satirist Jonathan Swift was sometimes accused of misanthropy. What is the definition? A hatred of humankind, a distrust of human nature. Misanthropy. 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 M Y S A N T H R O P Y misanthropy. This word could be confused with a similar word. The word is cavalry. It's a noun, and it's the component of an army that maneuvers and fights on horseback. Cavalry. Can I have the language of origin? Italian. Can you repeat the word, please? Cavalry. Cavalry. C A V Cavalry. C A V E L R Y. Cavalry. Semolina. Can you give me the definition, please? The purified middlings of durum or other hard wheat used for making pasta. Semolina. Italian, which formed it from a Latin word. Semolina.
Satori. Satori. S. I T O R Y. Satori. Argentine. Definition, please. The um, let's see. It's a native or inhabitant of Argentina. Argentine. Argentine. A R G E N T I N E. Argentine. Boudoir. Can you repeat the word? Boudoir. Can you give me a definition? A woman's dressing room, bedroom, or private sitting room. Boudoir. Can you give me the origin? French. Boudoir. 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 B O U D A I R. Boudoir. This word could be confused with a similar word. The word is etymology. It's a noun and it means a branch of linguistics concerned with the history, often including the prehistory, of a linguistic form as of a word or a morpheme. Etymology. Etymology. E-T-O-M-O-L-G-Y. Imam. Imam. I M A M. Imam. Obsequious. Will you please repeat the word? Obsequious. Definition? Meanly or servilely attentive, compliant to excess. Obsequious. Obsequious. O B S E Q U E U S. Obsequious. This word has a homonym. The word is con. It's a noun and it's a rest house in some Asian countries where caravans rest at night that is commonly a large bare building surrounding a court. Con. Needing food and shelter, the weary members of the caravan decided to stop at the next con, even if it looked unpromising. Con. Con. C-O-N. Con. Tortoni. T-O-R-T-O-N-I, Tortoni. Mole. Can you please repeat the word? Mole. Can you please define the word? A highly spiced sauce made principally of chili and chocolate, but containing numerous other ingredients, and served with meat as beef or turkey. Mole. Can you please tell me the origin? Spanish. Um, this one's hard. Uh, it is from a word that went from the Watl to Mexican Spanish. There are no accents. <laughs> okay. Um, M O L E, Mole. Taj. Taj? Taj. Can you give me the definition, please? A cap worn in Muslim countries, especially a tall, cone shaped cap worn by dervishes. Taj. Taj, can you use uh, T-A-J, Taj.
<laughs> this word has a near homonym. The word is cynical. It is an adjective, and it means exhibiting feelings ranging from distrustful doubt to contemptuous and mocking disbelief. Cynical. Um, can you use it in a sentence, please? After his experiences on the professional ice skating tour, Scott was cynical about show business. Cynical. Cynical. S. Y N I C L E. Cynical. Geronimo. What is the language of origin? Apache. Geronimo. G E R O N I M O. Geronimo. Accommodate. Can you please repeat the word? Accommodate. Accommodate. A C C O M A D A T E. Accommodate. Egalitarian. Egalitarian. E G A L I T A R I A N. Egalitarian. Believer, and I'm going to, he didn't say that this is a homonym, but it does. So it is the basic monetary unit of Venezuela. It's a noun. Believer. Bolivar. Bolivar. B-O-L-E-V-A-R. Bolivar. Aggregate. Can you please repeat the word? Aggregate. Can you please tell me the definition? A mass or body of units or parts somewhat loosely associated with one another. Aggregate. Marzipan. Marzipan. Can you use that uh, definition, please? A confection of crushed almonds or almond paste, sugar, and whites of eggs that's often shaped into various forms, as animals or fruits. Marzipan. Can you use it in a sentence, please? In Germany, small candy pigs made of marzipan are eaten at the start of the new year for good luck. Marzipan. Uh, uh, marzipan. M A R. Z I P A N Marzipan. Pentathlon. Pardon? Pentathlon. 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 P. Oh, what is the language of origin? Greek. I will start over. P E N T A T H. L-O-N, pentathlon? 
altruism altruism a l t r u i s m altruism and that was the end of round six and seller number two mercedes you are our fourth place Nougat. Uh, can you use the uh, definition, please? A confection made by mixing nuts or sometimes fruit pieces in a sugar paste whose composition is varied to give either a chewy or a brittle consistency. Nougat. Nougat. N-U-G-A-T-E. Nougat. Herpetology. Herpetology? Herpetology. What is the language of origin? It's originally a Greek word that passed into Latin. Herpetology. H-E-R-P-I-T-O-L-O-G-Y. Herpetology. <laughs> Regime. Regime. R E G I M E regime. That was the end of round seven, and now uh, this seller, Reagan, must spell one more word for the championship. Nemesis. Nemesis. N E M E S I S. Nemesis. <laughs> qualified for this state. Okay, we'll all be going to state, but now we're just getting our second group. Gingham. Gingham. Can you uh, say the definition? A clothing fabric, usually of yarn dyed cotton in plain weave, made in solid colors, checks, plaids, and stripes. Gingham. Gingham. Uh, can you use it in a sentence, please? Betsy made curtains of blue gingham for her kitchen. Gingham. G-I-N-G-H-A-M. Gingham. Mariachi. Mariachi. The language of origin is Italian. It is probably a French-derived Spanish word. Mariachi. 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 M A R I A C H I. Mariachi. Lieutenant. Um, can you give me the definition, please? A commissioned officer in the Army, Navy, Air Force, or Marine Corps. Lieutenant. Lieutenant. L U I E N T A N T Lieutenant. Scampi. 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 The language of origin is Italian. Greek derived Italian. Scampi. S C A M P I Scampi. Okay. You need to spell one more word to guarantee your second place finish. Terrapin. 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 T 
terrapin, terrapin. Terrapin. It is any of various North American turtles living in fresh or brackish water. Terrapin. Terrapend. Penny. Terrapen. T E R R A P E N. Terrapen. And that's that. <laughs> This word could be confused with a similar word. The word is flints. It is a verb and it means to strip as a whale or seal of blubber or skin. Flints. Can you use it in a sentence, please? When the members of the crew flints the seals in the movie, many viewers cannot bear to watch. So, flints? Flints. Flints? Flints. Flints? Uh, F-L-E-N-C-E. This word could be confused with a similar word. The word is kasha. It's a noun, and it means a mush from coarse, cracked buckwheat, barley, millet, or wheat. Kasha. What is the language of origin? Russian. Kasha. C A U C H I A. Come on back, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> mistletoe. Oh, mistletoe. M I S T L E T O E. Mistletoe. Saffron. Saffron. The language of origin. Originally Arabic, this word passed through Latin and then French before becoming English. Saffron. Saffron. S A F F R O N. Saffron. Babka. Babka? Babka. B A B. K-A. Baka. Eulogy. Eulogy. The language of origin. Greek. Eulogy. E-U-L-O-G-Y. Metaphor. Metaphor, M-E-T-A-P-H-O-R, metaphor. Beleaguer, beleaguer, beleaguer. What is the language of origin? Dutch, beleaguer. B-E-L-E-A-G-E-R, beleaguer. Cilantro. Cilantro. C I L A N T R O. Cilantro. Tsunami.
thank you everyone for coming to support the Missoula County Spelling Bee and thank you spellers for participating in today's bee. Now I'd like to introduce Cameron Evans from the Missoulian and uh, she's going to present cash awards. First place, we have Reagan. This is Reagan's fourth time winning the Missoula County Spelling Bee. And that's a record for Missoula County. Second place, we have Max Diaz. In third place, we have Gabrielle Hendry. Hendry. In fourth place, we have Mercedes Gordon. And then tied for fifth place, we have Jackson Steele, Harrison Beal, and Tegan Schmack. I'm going to make sure I say it right. Thank you, everyone. Those of you who have um, any of these children as your own, don't <laughs> leave before they fill out paperwork at the desk up here. The top three spellers will go to state, and the alternate, number four, would be the first alternate. And so in case one of these three can't go, then she would go. So um, thanks for coming and supporting the Missoula County Spelling Bee.